Super productive day today. We got the motor all ready, got the coolant lines installed, got the wires, got the headers, got the wiring all routed and put in for the engine harness. And there's one key problem with this motor being in the car. Can everybody guess what it is? Don't think the motor needs to come out. Well, you never know, but stick around so you can see in this episode how we got to this point and what that problem might be. All right, so back to project tax return. There's been a few delays, or I guess an adjustment of focus onto a few other cars. Uh, I got my old 91 coupe back, got Dutch number five back from the body shop, and then uh, picked up a real nice 92 black on black notch, which none of you guys would have seen on my channel. You would have seen it on Instagram if you guys are following me on there. So if you're not following me on Instagram, Make sure you do because it is a quick and easy to keep you guys kind of updated or give you guys sneak peeks on exactly what's going on. All right, guys, so here's project tax return sitting behind me. The hood is off. The car sitting down on all of its own suspension on wheels. It's a roller once again and managed to get some work in and got that diff all installed the other day. Um, you know, got the stock control arms. Uh, some KYB shocks, got the gas tank installed, and car back down on the ground. So, All right, so fuel sending unit time. I've got a brand new unit here, and there's nothing worse than going through all this trouble and just to have a bad gas gauge and not know how much fuel you have. Uh, all you Fox Body guys out there know that this is a very common fault in these cars. And what happens is, so if you actually peel off the back of this guy, you can actually see the connector that rubs against that little circuit board in there. And what happens is all of those little connecting points get worn down and then you end up with a bad signal to your gauge. And one of those things is it usually gets worn out around the middle. So for some of you guys that are familiar with this, you'd probably notice that your gas gauge will work when the tank is full, and then your gas gauge will work when you should be getting some gas when a gas light would be on somewhere down just below a quarter tank. And that's because all of that, those contact points in the center, they end up getting worn out and sending unit fails. So I'm gonna go ahead, get this new unit installed and comes with a new rubber seal and locking lock ring lock ring thank <laughs> you technical terms get me every time so we'll fish this into the tank get that sorted out and then this thing will be ready to install good actually it is a good shape it's not even dried out Yeah, I was just going to say. <laughs> <laughs> now it is time to put the rear end back in the car. Got Braden here today messing around with me. Always helps to have an extra set of hands when you're putting your diff in. So this will work out really well. Got a nice set of springs here. Got our KYB shocks for the rear. Went ahead and cleaned up and painted the control arm setup. The diff is all painted. Changed the fluid in there. Uh, put in our friction modifier, all that stuff. So the diff is good to go. Did validate actually on the ring gear was stamped 373. So we were right in our analysis when we spun um, the pinion and checked against the drums turning. So our math was correct, which is good. And now it's just a matter of rolling that thing underneath there, lifting it up, get these control arms on, and this car will be a roller in no time. Any words? I don't know. <laughs> you get the camera and you just don't yeah. know what to say. No, I don't know. I just I don't want to I don't want to be seen working on a Ford. <laughs> So 
yesterday. Got this wiring harness all cleaned up. That's looking good. Couple products that I use. Real important one, toothbrush. Got some spray nine here to uh, kind of cut through dirt and grease. And if there's some greasy spots, especially hiding inside, you know, the clips and uh, kind of all these little grooves and areas on the connectors, I'll blast them with some brake clean and that usually blows out any grease or dirt deposits. And then once everything is cleaned up with the dirt and the grease out, especially within all the little wire loom, and this loom is actually in really good shape, so it's not worth trying to pull it off and redo it. It's better just to clean it and, uh, and reuse it. So uh, once everything is clean and looking good the way that I want it, then I spray everything down with WD-40 and uh, that gives a nice, uh, nice coating and um, makes things look nice and clean and tidy, which is the most important thing when you're putting a car back together. Here is our heart for project tax return. And if you guys have been following me for a while, you would probably recognize this motor. And the irony is this came out of an 88 black notch last year. The project of the little coupe that could and demodifying a race car, putting it back more to stock. So this is the motor that had come out of that car. And this is a really, really nice motor. 306 Edelbrock aluminum heads, B cam, got the intakes, upgraded injectors, MAF, it's tuned. Everything's pretty much good to go on this thing. It's just a matter of bolting on accessories, some headers. And one thing that I did notice is that that car did not have heat and it doesn't actually have the coolant lines that are running from the lower intake manifold to the back which hooks up to your heater core on the firewall. So I'm gonna have to go through uh, some of my parts and inventory. Hopefully I can locate those lines because um, I'm sure that the, uh, the owner's wife is going to want to make sure that she has heat as well as AC. And this motor actually didn't have AC hooked up to it either. So I'm gonna have to locate AC brackets for it. No big deal really in terms of the heat and AC. I'll get that addressed. The biggest part is taken care of, and that is this heart for the car. Now, this is kind of where you guys are wondering probably which direction was the car gonna go. Well, the owner wanted about 300 horse, give or take, and this motor actually dynoed at 350 to the wheels. I'm gonna go ahead, get those motor mounts changed up, see if we got our coolant lines, Get a few things sorted and ready. Gonna go ahead and bolt on uh, the bell housing on the back and get that all done out of the way so that that way it's easy to get this thing bolted in and assembled. We'll put the transmission in, in the air. Um, that'll allow us to get our fuel lines run and tighten up a lot of stuff because uh, getting the diff in, everything's just kind of loosely bolted in. So once everything's assembled in place, we'll torque everything down, get everything ready um, get the exhaust bolted on, manage to find a real nice um, off-road X-pipe right here. These things are becoming like gold since a lot of places are stopping to make the off-road stuff, it seems. So um, got that, and uh, fan shroud's all cleaned up and painted black instead of that weird brown color that they come. And of course, our transmission is all clean, ready to go. So... Not much more time to waste here talking about it, guys. It's time to start wrenching, assembling, motor putting in. All right, so here we are at the back of the shop, and this is actually the Dutch number five motor. So this is a 347 stroker, GT40 heads, tubular intakes, and uh, this guy's gonna be getting ready to go back in the car one of these days. But for now, I need to steal those coolant lines. I checked the other intake that I had, they weren't on there. Um, the 86 motor they are on, but um, the accessibility of that motor is, uh, is a little more difficult right now where I got it stashed. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop the lines off here. I got another set coming from a friend of mine tomorrow. I just really wanna make sure that in terms of productivity that I get to where I wanna be with the car because if I wait till tomorrow before I get them, then I clean them, then I sand them, then I paint them, then I install. 
I might not be able to get that motor in for two days. Whereas here, I can probably get these cleaned up, painted, and on the motor. In worst case, um, I can be installing the motor by tomorrow. So I don't want to lose that whole day over something so easy. And I think that's kind of just the message I'm trying to get across right now. When you're doing your project, try and, you know, try and keep up to your timelines and what you're trying to achieve because there's nothing worse than losing a full day. There's of course other things that I could be doing um, in parallel or while I wait, but this is one of those milestones that you just really need to cross and just check it off the list and uh, get it done. All right, so I got this assembly out here, which is kind of interesting. It's like a homemade, um, I guess, uh, heater core block off. And if you look, all it is, is it's the beginning of this pipe cut right about here and reversed and turned around. So normally this guy sits this way going towards the back while well, all they did was cut that off and directed it this way so that that way um, you could retain the coolant temp sensor and you don't have to block off this port on the water pump. So while I'm cleaning and getting this guy painted up in between coats, I'm gonna focus on getting these brand new convertible style motor mounts installed uh, so that, that way you can get these guys off that belong with the uh, tubular K member that I have. And um, that'll be uh, pretty much it. Gonna run the wiring. Uh, for the main engine harness, get that through the firewall and routed correctly, uh, get the bell housing bolted on, and we should be good to go. So here we go guys, got the lines off, you know, it took about 10 minutes to get them off, it was a little tricky to maneuver them out of there, and uh, spent, you know, five minutes in the sandblasting cabinet, blew off all the old paint, got everything all cleaned up, took a scotch pad to uh, all the surface, wiped everything down with brake clean, Get some primer, some paint on here, some nice low gloss black, and uh, this thing will be looking like brand new. Then we can go ahead and get it installed in our motor. All right, guys, so welcome to the engine bay of the car. Got myself all uh, tucked up in here, and uh, we're gonna go ahead and pull this uh, motor harness. We'll push it through the firewall hole here, get this sorted out, and I'm probably gonna run it down underneath uh, the pinch weld here for the um, the firewall and that way it will kind of be nice and hidden and out of the way So one important thing to remember when you're fishing this harness back through you got to put the main connector in first and Then you can go ahead put the ground wires through uh, This relay that I just finished pushing through and you got to envision the heater box is sitting right in this area So you got to kind of just sneak things over to the left and down towards that kick panel so so far, so good. I'll get everything pushed up in there as far as I can, and then that should give me enough material that I can go in through the uh, passenger side door, get down to the kick panel, pull everything down through. So similarly, it's, it's really just the reverse of removal. Um, you know, you gotta pull all those other wires out before you can get the big main harness that goes to the computer in the end. So hopefully these wires will be agreeable down there. Here we go, pull our harnesses down. So remember, you want to make sure you pull everything through. You need your green connector, you need your ground wires, you need the main harness, and then there is that relay right here. So we've got everything through. go so there we go guys got all our wiring pulled down through and two things that we need to do we need to put the frame or the skeleton that holds uh, the computer in place in the kick panel because that was removed and um, there's a little piece of sound deadening on a piece of plastic and that guy I think I have an extra one so I'm gonna make sure I put that in there because it'll just reduce noise in the cabin those are kind of those pieces that people rip them out and they never end up getting reinstalled. So we're gonna make sure 
that all that type of stuff does get reinstalled uh, with this build. Hop back in. In case you guys are wondering why I'm hopping over the front and if you're curious about marking up the paint or anything, don't worry because this front bumper cover is actually getting taken off and repainted because it was all cut out for the intercooler that was in this car. So one thing that we want to keep in mind is we got some lines over here and um, I've actually gone ahead and disconnected or loosened the clamps. You just got to be mindful. You don't want to put too much tension on any of these things because this is your um, evaporator and this is your heater core and you don't want to uh, snap any of those guys. Otherwise, you're going to be taking out your dash and replacing parts. Our wiring is now run up underneath that pinch weld there. Again, nothing is 100% in place yet. This is just all the test fitting to make sure that the wires are going to reach and do what we need them to do. So got the, uh, the harness run down through the passenger side here. The grommet is in place. You know, we have our connectors here for our therm actors, sensors, and all that stuff for our AC here, uh, the harness for the O2 sensors, which this I need to decide if I'm going to try and pass it through the back of the strut tower and run it on the underside. Um, one key thing that we need to keep in mind here is I do actually need to wire in the mass air into this harness um, as this motor uh, with the cam and everything else it requires mass air and it's already the whole motor has been tuned so I have the computer and the mass air meter and everything that belongs with that motor so we are going to be wiring that in so that might be something that will interest you guys um, who haven't done it or are interested in doing it uh, to your non-mass air cars. So that is one thing that we got to keep in mind down here. Wiring all run along the backside of the engine bay there and started tucking some stuff up down through in this area here. So passed a couple wires down through this hole and we have a couple wires passed down through here. And uh, both these are already used. Uh, there will be grommets put in place again right now. The name of the game is just making sure that all our wires will reach to where we need them and um, we can get all our connectors hooked up properly. So the starter solenoid is wedged way up in there. So definitely gonna have to access that. There's some leftover wiring still in here. Uh, we'll get all of this cleaned up. Wiring always looks like an absolute disaster uh, when you're running things, so don't be too, uh, I guess, discouraged if you're watching this and being like, oh my God, that's so much work. Anyways, so here are the two important connectors that connect the body together. So I did get um, an 88 harness. Um, actually, it's an 87 harness. 87 and 88 are the same. Unless you happen to have a California car, then you'd have mass air on your 88 harness. So this is good. These guys reach, which is the most important thing. Um, they should work in this location. So I'm going to go ahead and clip them together, test fit, double check some wiring and all that. And uh, once we know it's all good, then we'll uh, start our cleanup and finalization process. So time for the bell housing to get installed. You can see we got a center force clutch here, uh, lightweight flywheel. So this thing should grab and uh, spin over quite nice. Throw some new hardware on here as well. So I'm not using a high torque mini on this one because I actually had this starter kicking around and it's pretty much brand new and the car isn't wired for the uh, mini so I assume that using this fresh starter would work just fine. And there isn't going to be any type of crazy long tube headers or anything like that uh, where the high torque mini would be more desirable to try and keep some of the heat soak off of them. In this application, everything should be just fine. Heater core lines all painted up and uh, see if I can strategically 
The funny thing is, is that the stud that's on the bottom um, that holds bolts down the uh, lower intake manifold, it's actually there in the right place. So it's going to go through this hole and I'll be able to put a nut on the top and get it passed down properly. All right, that's good. One other thing to keep in mind, guys, you don't need to crank this down so that all of the threads aren't showing into your lower intake. Um, that's actually a big no-no. You can risk actually um, cracking the uh, cast of your lower or, you know, it's just, it makes it even more difficult when you're trying to remove it. So you just treat it as pipe thread and, you know, as long as you got your thread sealant on there, um, you really aren't going to have too much to worry about. Just snug it down, get it to a good tightness, and you're going to be fine. Hey guys, so I almost forgot we had some headers to install here. So we got some nice BBK equal length headers. And um, if you have the opportunity to install your headers before putting the motor in, um, I always recommend it. Seems to be a little easier instead of wrestling them in after the fact, leaning over your fenders or from underneath the car. Um, they can be a nuisance, especially the equal length when you got your uh, steering shaft and all those other things potentially in the way. So the other thing that I wanted to point out to you guys is that when you're dealing with aluminum heads, make sure that you get everything started and keep everything loose and uh, don't over torque because if you start getting things too tight and you know your uh, bolt isn't going in 100% straight, the last thing you want to do is strip the threads in your nice aluminum heads. It's not like the cast ones where uh, you definitely have more forgiveness. So just be conscious of that, guys. It's, uh, I guess, my little bit of advice. All right, so there we have it. We got our headers bolted on, got our coolant lines all sorted out, got the plug wires on, everything is tucked up and nice and neat, ready to get picked up and put into the engine bay of Project Tax Return. So big milestone here, got a lot accomplished today. So I'm sure this thing's gonna go in nice and smooth. Once this thing is in, I'm cracking a beer and calling today a victory. So I've cracked my beer and I wanted to scream victory. Instead, I cracked my beer so that I can kind of think about things. So there's one key problem with this motor being in this car. And if any of you guys can see it, this motor sits high. And it's not because there's issues with the mounts or anything. The issue is that the intake is running a pretty big spacer. So it's got a one inch spacer on it we got this massive throttle body and spacer and um, it's not going to clear a stock hood and the owner wants a stock hood on this car. So the funny thing is, is that the hood that was on the notch that this motor came out of is the exact same hood that came with this car. If you guys remember, the hood didn't fit so well. Uh, it was cracked where they had installed some hood shocks and uh, you know, where the pop rivets were, there was too much stress on the fiberglass and it cracked. And uh, the biggest thing is the owner wants a stock hood on this car. So gonna have to make some decisions here and see. So I'm gonna reach out to him and see A, does he want potentially a cowl hood and that'll clear and fix those problems? Or do we remove the spacer? So if you guys can see right here, there's a fitting at the bottom of the intake manifold that hooks up to the um, PCV line that goes to the back of the lower intake manifold. And it's pretty much on the valve cover, which means the intake can't go down any lower. So gonna have to take a look, see if maybe there's another area for that. We're gonna have to take a look and see if we can potentially reroute that PCV fitting. The other option would be a smaller valve cover. The other thing that we need to be concerned about is if it goes down, will the throttle linkage clear uh, the valve cover as well, which uh, I'm not 100% sure on at this moment. So um, 
Gonna have to see, uh, do some investigation. Like I said, if he wants the cowl hood, it's sitting over here. I'm confident that I can do the repairs to the hood and get that thing looking nice and straight and all of that again, it's just gonna take some time. As is, trying to sort out some options for the motor here. So, project roadblocks, you gotta love them. Every project runs into them. Nothing goes 100% as planned. Nothing is certain, nothing is for sure. So there you have it, guys. Another project roadblock. We'll get over it. We'll figure out what we need to do. Important thing is, motor sitting in the car. Um, ultimately, maybe he says, I don't want that motor, I want a different motor. Uh, one that fits properly. So one key point about this situation that I want to rewind back to is remember how I said I didn't have the heater lines for um, the lower intake for, that go to the heater core. And I said, I'd rather pull the ones off another motor, clean those ones up instead of waiting for my friend to drop off another set tomorrow. It would mean that I would have to sand them down, clean them up or blast them like I did these ones. And it, I'd potentially be delayed two days before I got the motor in. Instead, I managed to get the motor in today and find out this problem that I have in terms of hood clearance. So it was important to get this in and make sure that the wiring was right, that the motor is sitting in place and everything else, because now I'm not gonna waste even more time on the back end of things. If I had waited for those lines, this could have delayed me maybe even a week, who knows? So that was the importance of being able to get this thing in there um, I guess at the end of the day, that upper intake might be coming off and would have been easier to get the heater lines in there, but it wasn't really that big of a deal. Part of the reason why it wasn't a big of a deal is because there's so much room between the upper intake and the lower because of the spacer. So double-edged sword, it helped me out, but now it's causing problems. So anyways, guys, there you have it. There is the unknown and the problem with the motor currently in the car. We'll get it sorted out. But thank you guys for following along, all of your support, all of those things. We'll see you guys next time.